On today's show, should Predators fans be concerned about Phil Tomasino? Andy Burnett comments on why the former first-round pick hasn't been in the lineup the past couple days and when we might see him back. Plus, Preds play Canucks tonight and some drama over the Centennial Sportsplex locker rooms caused by the Canucks social team. We'll dive into it today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, want to start with a special shout out. To our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who turn into every single show, we love you guys. We appreciate the support you give us week after week. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and PenaltyBoxRadio.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at The Hockey News. I also want to mention today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. On today's show, uh, Predators taking on the Vancouver Canucks. We have a preview of that game, plus a little bit of shade, I guess you would call it, and uh, coming from the Canucks social team yeah. It's a it's a whole thing. Uh, we'll dive into it uh, a little bit more in just a second. And give our thoughts on lo- locker room gate. I guess, I guess. centennial gate. Centennial I don't know. Gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot to get to. Uh, but first, let's talk about Phil Tomasino, the yeah. Predators' former first round pick. He was a guy that a lot of people kind of had pegged to have a big start to the season. Uh, had a good strong to last season. He's a fast skater, uh, really kind of a quick player. A lot of people put two and two together and say, oh, he's young. He's up and coming. He's somebody the Preds want to build around. He's coming into Andrew Burnett's system. This should be a match made in heaven. And it just hasn't, Anne. And it's resulted in Tomasino getting off to a rough start and being healthy scratched the past two games. Yeah, this has been kind of an interesting situation to watch unfold. And it stinks because we've seen Phil Tomasino kind of go through something a little bit similar last season. So I think that we are all a little bit hypersensitive maybe to Phil Tomasino being in and out of the lineup, which he may be or he may not be. I don't know. Um but Phil Tomasino has been a healthy scratch for the last two uh, the last two games. I don't know that we'll see him in practice yesterday. The lines were similar to the starting lines, and he, you know, was not in those, you know, kind of starting twelve. Um, so we'll see what happens tonight. But yeah, I, this is an interesting one for me, and I think everybody probably needs to breathe a little bit through it, even though. I know that there are a lot of people that are really concerned about it because Phil Tomasino is one of those pieces you would not want to lose. You know, this is somebody you don't want to place on waivers and see somebody Sam Fagimo, you know? So yeah. Or or Ellie Tolvanen. Or I was just going to go Sam Fagimo because it was nicer on our end, but okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, we do not want Ellie Tolvan in Gate 2.0 because Ellie Tolvan in Gate, the original, was painful enough. Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is interesting. And I have some mixed feelings about this because I think so much about it is a little bit circumstantial and maybe not speaking tons of things over Phil Tomasino necessarily. I, I you know, I think a lot of it is circumstantial. Yeah, and here's the thing, to to hit back on your point about, oh, is he going to be waived? Is he going to be the next Ellie Tolvanen? Uh, I I, I don't think so. I don't think this is like a situation in which, you know, he's going to be considered a bust or anything like that. Uh, But I do think there is a separate conversation of we can be a little bit disappointed in 
you know, him not exactly jumping up and sort of grabbing that brass ring just yet, because, Hey, what was the big kind of talking point when, you know, Barry Trotz traded, you know, Ryan Johansson and cut Matt Duchesne and, you know, called it like an extension of the trade deadline where all these veterans got changes. Like we need some room for some young players to come up. And, uh, you know, there have been players like Tommy Novak uh, who have been able to do that. You so Parson and have been able to jump up and be like, no, 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 I have a permanent spot in the top six now. Like I have, I've moved on from, you know, a prospect to an actual key member of this team. I think a lot of people were expecting Tomasino to, right. to be that player this year, just because he's had more NHL experience than pretty much anybody else in that Preds prospect pool this year. And the, the fact that he hasn't done that yet, that's been, I, I think, not, I wouldn't say a concern, right? But I think we have a right to be a little disappointed. Yeah. I don't think it's the I don't think it's the trajectory that expectations were built on for Phil Tomasino. And that's where I think we kind of all have to refocus because he's not behind. He's not um, this. I agree with you. Phil Tomasino is not a bust. He may just be somebody who's going to be a little bit slower to adjust the finer points more consistently to an NHL game. And this timing wise, you know, I'm talking about, it's kind of circumstantial. You look, he is coming in to a training camp with a new head coach where literally everybody has to prove themselves. Like mm -hmm. Philip Forsberg has to earn his spot in the lineup. Now, Philip Forsberg is not going to not earn his spot in the lineup, but Andrew yeah. Burnett was no joking when he said, it's a clean slate. Like, I want to see from these players what they can do. Mm -hmm. And I think Phil Tomasino had a good camp. I was interested, though, and I'd be curious your take on it. One of the things that he told us in training camp is that he actually lost weight over mm -hmm. the summer to work on his speed. Mm -hmm. And one of the th areas where I'm like, oh, buddy, I would love to see him a little bit stronger on the puck. And so I'm like, maybe you need more bulk. I remember a lot of episodes where you're like, I need to make that boy some pork chops or cookies or something like that. I do. I was maybe like, you lost weight. Bread. It's bread season. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but but and you you were at uh, practice yesterday when mm -hmm. um, Andrew Burnett was asked about yeah. Phil Tomasino and he did have uh, some insight as to maybe what might be behind some of his struggles this year. Yeah. So this is what Andrew Burnett said when he was asked about, you know, Phil Tomasino and what does he need to do to get back in the lineup? What do you see from him and what does he need to do get, to get back in the lineup? This is what Andrew Burnett had to say being read in Ann Kimmel's voice. Uh, he said, I see the offensive instincts. I think just the 200 foot game for him. The pace of play is a little bit different. And we're asking a lot of our forwards to play at that pace and put that work in and track the puck as much as we do. So I think he needs to get a little accustomed to it. And unfortunately, there's just some different players that somebody's going to get a different chance. The way he's turned out, he'll come in again. He's working really hard in practice. I think he'll be ready to go. So there's no panic here from Andrew Brunette. And I think he brings up an interesting point. You know, the Nashville Predators picked up Sam Fagimo. They just picked up Liam Foodie. Like the Predators are going to do that. And that's going to mean some people are going to move in and out as they get a look at some other players and pieces that they add. And Phil Tomasino may be one of them. So I don't know that it's panic time here by yeah. any means. The other thing I will tell you is that Phil Tomasino outlasted Ryan O'Reilly as last man off the ice yesterday. He, when I left, still on the ice working with yeah. the coach. So yeah. he's doing everything right. Yeah. Burnett mentioned he's been working really hard to try to get back so, on the ice. And I think the big thing is, you know, he didn't say like, oh, you know, we'll see or anything. He said, no, Phil Tomasino's going to have another chance to get, you know, draw right. back in and we'll kind of see where he is there. So yeah, uh, certainly I don't think reasons for Preds fans to panic or Correct. be concerned. I do think there's maybe valid reasons to be disappointed. Yes. Uh, and but I think he's that, not done yet, y'all. He's not he's done yet. No, yet. no, no, no ways is, is this right. like, oh, he's, that's the end of Phil Tomasino and Nashville. Preach. Uh, Predators have a big game tonight against the Vancouver Canucks, another team with a lot of players off to hot starts. 
we will break down that matchup plus some locker room shade from the Canucks social media team. And wow. I guess the Canucks team in general, what's that all about? <laughs> and we're, we're going to have to do a deep dive into that in just one second. First, though, want to mention today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Uh, every time I buy tickets to a sporting event, I am remembered of the first time that I got to Fenway Park with my dad. We found these seats on uh, like a different app. It was in the lower bowl, like pretty like, you know, cheap. And we were like, you know, oh, this this is a fantastic deal. Like we're, we're right on the, the left field line down low. Can see all the players and stuff. We get to our seats. There's a big old pole right in the middle of our view. We could only see either the pitcher's mound or the batter's box. Uh, we couldn't see both. With game time, you don't have to worry about something like that happening anymore. That's because game time shows you your seats before you buy them. So you know exactly what you're getting uh, when you go to a big event. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guaranteed, all designed to take the guesswork out of buying tickets game time is the only ticketing app that gives you a complete peace of mind with your purchase the all-in prices show you your total up front so you know you're not having to deal with all kinds of hidden fees or anything like that and it's so easy to use you can buy tickets with just two taps of your phone and it gets sent right to your phone so you don't have to dig through all these old emails so take the guesswork out of buying tickets don't get stuck behind a giant pole uh, at a baseball at a baseball game, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute ticket prices, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode is brought also brought to you by our great friends at the Sleeper app. Look, a new NHL season brings all kinds of possibilities. Philip Forsberg could very easily score 50 goals. The Predators could hoist the Stanley Cup, and you could win big money by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports. You can play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, college football, all of that on Sleeper. And with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Of course, you know we are the daily fantasy hockey folks here. And with the Sleep Wrap, you can check out all of the trending stories in the NHL. You can see locker room videos. You can watch game highlights. All of that's going to keep you up to date on all the latest news and player performances. So when it comes time to play that daily fantasy hockey, you're going to have a fun and easy time with Sleeper and all the information you get. Entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether players like Ryan O'Reilly or Tommy Novak, Philip Forsberg, Connor McDavid, Alex Ovechkin, Crosby or McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. You heard me, Preds fans. You can win a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. You can use our promo code Locked On NHL, and you're going to get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms for use of details and locational availability. All right, Predators taking on the Vancouver Canucks tonight in Smashville. Uh, a weird start time. It's going to throw everybody's nap off. 8.15 Central for some reason, which means I'll be asleep by the time I get <laughs> done. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh interesting start time to say. Yeah, that. it's part of that frozen frenzy where it's, Literally everybody and their brother 
in a lot of cases, literally, are playing hockey tonight for the NHL. It's it's wild. But we got an 8.15 start time. Do they not know that my peak hours end at 10 p.m.? Yeah, that's my wind down time. That is that is me with a cup of tea and a, a good book. Uh, I yeah. don't want to sit here and cover Cole Smith's forecheck or something like that that late. <laughs> I know, I know. That's uh, your Demko stressing us out at 1030. Not here for it. Exactly. Uh, the Canucks, a little bit of an interesting team. Uh, yeah. to start the year. They're, they're three and two, uh, but their headline is that they have some players who are off to uh, lightning fast starts uh, in the NHL this season. That includes Elias Pettersson, uh, tied for second in the league in points, 10 points through his first five games. Only uh, Alex DeBrinkett has more in Detroit. Uh, JT Miller with, with eight points. Uh, Brock Besser, six goals in his first five games this season. Uh, Quinn Hughes, his first season as Canucks captain, looking like a stud uh, on that blue line. So the Canucks, you know, the, the games they've played have been kind of hit or miss. Yeah. But the key guys that they need every year to step up, they are doing just that early, Anne. Yeah, you talk about the Canucks being hit or miss. When they hit, they hit hard, y'all. They <laughs> defeated uh, Edmonton 8-1. to one. Brock Bo Besser had four goals in one game. Did he not take a break and get a drink of water in that period of time? No, he did not. And like you said, Elias Pettersson, Quinn Hughes has had, he's looked terrific with his shot from the blue line. There is a lot of good things happening with the Vancouver Canucks. You know, you look at their power play is one of the top power plays so far this season in the league. I mean, they really are when they're on, they're really on. And they've got a lot of weapons. They've really come out hot. So even though you look at the schedule and you may think, oh, Vancouver. No, friends, this is an oh, Vancouver. Yeah. This is that game. Yeah. And to me, the biggest thing, I think, for the Canucks this year is you look at their goaltending. Gosh, I remember yeah. that was that was the big kind of question mark. They had Thatcher Demko, but injury problems last mm -hmm. year. Uh, Demko looks like he has on this to be 930 save percentage uh, so far this year. And that's with uh, facing uh, 100 shots yes. in his first three games. So the fact that he's able to have that high save percentage while facing that many, you know, that much volume uh, speaks to how good he has been. And then, you know, their other one, Casey Desmith. Uh, you know, long time Pittsburgh Penguin. Yep. Uh, he has three starts this season and he has a 938 save percentage. So, so good. The the goaltending issues that I think have kind of haunted Vancouver, at least last year, uh, seem to be fixed. And Thatcher Demko once again kind of looking like the, you know, the, the, the elite NHL goaltender that I think a lot of people thought he was. Yeah, if you watch their previous game, if, if you caught any of their previous games, they really are making UC Soros saves. I mean, they you have to work to get this puck past their goaltenders. They have come out to such a hot start. And for me, I think that's going to be one of the keys for the Nashville Predators is this is not going to be a Vancouver team that's going to be like, okay, you took a shot, you get a goal. This is a second and third chance um, team that you're going to have to really fight net front to get a second and third chance to get this puck in net because they are playing so hot in, in net right now. So I think the Predators are going to have to crash the net. I think they're going to have to hope for rebounds. I think they're going to have to have bodies in front of the net. This is maybe a greasy goal game for the Nashville Predators because I'm telling you, Vancouver's goaltending is hot right now. Yeah. And for the Nashville Predators, you have to kind of do the same things you've been doing. Yes. And, uh, you know, you, we talked yesterday kind of about how that first line has been working where they're just, you know, getting the majority of chances when they're on the ice. One of the best, the NHL so far at generating quality chances. Yeah. Um, we've talked about, you know, the depth and, and, you know, how well Tommy Novak has done this year. The Preds are going to need to do that same thing where they just sort of overwhelm teams with offense and, I think in all but one game this year, Anne, which I think was an Edmonton game, uh, the Predators have had the more the the bigger amount of shots, right, than their opponents, uh, which is a big sign because how many times did it happen last year? 
Yes. So I mean, that's can, I can count on two hands how many times it happened last year. <laughs> in so, an 82 game season. <laughs> yeah. So early on, you know, the Predators, you're seeing glimpses of that Andrew Burnett offense where it's just kind of that stifling, uh, all out, all the time sort of you know, rotation and, and offensive pressure and being more aggressive at going back and winning pucks rather than, you know, kind of stop back and, you know, sort of batten the hatches down on defense. They will have to do that again. And it, it wouldn't be surprised if this is like, you know, kind of like a 30, 35 shots mm-hmm. each type of matchup, just sort of a run and gun back and forth. Uh, and so it's to me, you know, it's going to come down to the goaltending and which goaltender can make that one more crucial save. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this game is going to be won or lost based on what happens right in front of the net. And I do think the Nashville Predators are going to have to provide a lot of defensive support for UC Soros because just like the Predators need second and third chances, Vancouver has no problem cleaning up anything in front of the net. So it's really going to be, I agree with you, I think this is going to be a game of goaltending, and I think it's going to be a game of one goal, maybe two goal difference. This is going to be a good one tonight, y'all, at 8 15. Uh, another bold prediction for this game is that the Vancouver Canucks are probably going to be more happy with the Bridgestone Arena locker rooms than they apparently were at the Centennial Sportsplex locker rooms. What's the deal with that big social media post uh, that the team put out yesterday? We're going to dive into that whole controversy in just a little bit. First, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And that's because right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Yep, that's right. All you have to do is put $5 down and you get $200 in bonus bets win or lose so if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel no better time to get in on the action the app is so easy to use and there's a wide range of betting options including spreads player props over-unders and much much more I tell you what you might want to start putting some more money down on those Eagles games now that Kevin Byard uh, is up in the city of brother brotherly love ouch may may he never be forgotten uh, yeah, I, I would recommend that. And I would definitely stay away from any Titans offense bets. Um, so visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Ann. Uh, Preds Twitter, not completely thrilled with the Vancouver Canucks social media team. Which I guess I guess it's kind of more of uh, the Vancouver Canucks in general. So here's here's what happened. Uh, the Canucks posted uh, either a Twitter live or Instagram live. I'm not completely sure where it came from. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, um, but it showed them getting off the bus in full hockey gear, walking into Centennial Sportsplex for practice. Uh, with the caption, arriving to the practice rink in Nashville already in gear because it doesn't have proper dressing rooms, dot, dot, dot. Um, As somebody who has been to Centennial Sportsplex many times. Right. Yes, they have dressing rooms. Yes. Uh, As Alex Doherty pointed out, he's like, I played hockey here. I've gotten dressed in these dressing rooms. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, you know, there's all kinds of high school games there. I don't know if there's still high school games, but there was when I was in high school there. Yeah. I mean, there's hockey teams, like, you know, four or five hockey teams, like, playing there at any given time. What's what's the deal with this? Like, are, are the Canucks expecting, like... You know, champagne and a chandelier at somebody's practice <laughs> rink. It's yeah. a practice rink. It's a practice rink, y'all. But I think they were leaning a little too heavy on the word proper, you know. And I'm like, again, I'm with you. It's a practice rink, you know. And there is a part of me that wants to be like, do you know how many people worked their tail off to not make it to the NHL? who wouldn't complain this much about not having posh, you know, locker rooms at a practice rink, y'all. 
it's come yeah. on. Like come on. it's your first off, you're at another team's like facility. Right. Like, I mean, it's not even like the Preds facility anymore. You know, they've no. they practiced mostly at Fort Ice Arena now. Um, but it's you know, what's what's not proper about it? And first off, you're just there for like a practice anyway. Yeah. Like, like you're that's... just gonna get stinky and sweaty and gross. Yeah. So now somebody did speculate that maybe the showers weren't working. And I'm like, I get, okay, if the showers aren't working, maybe, but you don't have to show up in your gear. If the showers aren't working, that's ridiculous. You're well, just being dramatic. Well then say that in the post. Yeah. You're just being over dramatic. Look, friends, look, I get Centennial Ice, you know, I get Centennial is Sportsplex is not the newest state of the art place but you know what you need you need an ice rink and a place to put your put your ego down and centennial yeah. has both so yeah. yeah it was it was like hmm. you're really gonna throw shade at nashville you're gonna throw shade at nashville really y'all have you seen <laughs> where teams get dressed uh at mullet arena in arizona <laughs> It's called Mullet Arena. <laughs> it's literally like, you know, when you go to conventions and there's like those black curtains like blocking right. off. Like that's that is where teams get dressed. In the theater, yeah. you get dressed off stage yeah. left and hope somebody from the crowd doesn't get a little sneak peek. Come the on, y'all. The New York Rangers have had practices at Rockefeller Center and Central Park before. Nobody like, died from that. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Central Park, but I don't think there's NHL quality locker rooms just hidden behind Strawberry Fields somewhere. <laughs> like yeah, this, this is was... like you're you're there for one day, and uh, like there's this yeah like you're not gonna have a perfect practice dressing room yes. on the road, especially at a complex like. Centennial, maybe that you're used to at your own NHL design hockey rink, but you're there for what one hour, two yeah, hours tops? Two hours tops. What, yeah, again, what are you expecting? A place with like a baby grand piano? Is this like, <laughs> is this, yeah, like, is this sort of like an executive airport lounge that you're expecting with posh little chairs and like equipment warmers and stuff like that. Right. You're mm -hmm. there for one day and you grew up playing in rinks a hundred times worse than Centennial Sportsplex. Traveling like, you know, cross country with bags of stinky equipment and you can't tough it out for one practice? Yeah. How bougie are you? <laughs> You're the Vancouver Canucks. Well, and here's the thing. Excuse us for hosting KISS at our home arena. Yeah. So that you couldn't practice there. Like, our bad, we had company. <laughs> yeah. I will take oh. Gene Simmons over Tyler Myers any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, come on. Yeah. Like, what do you... It's just, it was in poor taste. And and look, I get Centennial is not Fordyce Center Bellevue. I get Centennial locker rooms are not locker rooms at Bridgestone Arena. But are you broken? Yeah. Are you broken? Like, be thankful. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Go get I mean, a drink at Tootsie's and walk it off. Yeah. Like, you're there for one practice. Come on, man. Like, why do you have to make a whole thing over it? And you know what? If it is if it is a situation where the showers won't work, just put that. Just yeah. put that. Just put that in the social posts and be like, hey – uh, dressing at the hotel because, you know, the showers here were broken or something like that with an eye roll emoji. We have been like, oh, yeah, that kind of sucks. Sorry about don't, that. Don't sit there and be, you know, like posh and be like, Rutherford, where are those skate sharpeners? Yes. The, thy bathroom floor is not heated. It's, it's just, it's a bad look, y'all. It's a bad look. It's a bad look for any team. It's a really bad look when you're the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, unless this is some secret deal uh, to keep Elias Patterson in the fold for quite some time. There you go. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, we'll see what happens tonight at Bridgestone Arena. Who knows? Where they have cool. nice showers. Yeah, there are, there are showers at Bridgestone Arena. It would be funny as hell if there's like a water main <laughs> break or something like that and just something happened. That'd be um, great. I mean, the game would probably get canceled. It would be great if Kiss showered in the, the visitor locker room and they didn't clean the shower. So, like, all the makeup's all over the floor. There we go. The just, like, Gene Simmons' 12-foot-high platform shoes are just <laughs> rotting in a corner right somewhere. There. Uh, we'll see what happens again. We will be back tomorrow with a full recap, including one word to describe the game and all the highs and lows that came from it. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter X at EMK underscore mama on ice. You can find me at penaltyboxradio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also be sure to follow our show on Facebook and Instagram. Just search locked on predators or on X at L O underscore predators. That's going to do it for us on today's locked on predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We will be back with an all-new episode tomorrow. We'll see you then.